So how do you boost sulfur to help the salicylate problem? We hit on the proteins. We hit on some of the other foods, like maybe some garlic, maybe some onion, some broccoli, things that are going to contain again, sulfur. Yeah, and free. those are going to be high in FODMAP. So again, we have to dovetail that. This is where having a clinician is going to help. Uh, adding in HCL, adding in enzymes, being able to break down those foods, adding in collagen amino acids or bone broth, which is very high in glycine, which is very sulfur. We may need to add in some things like N-acetylcysteine. Again, it may not be great out of the gates. NAC is also a biofilm buster. So a lot of the high sulfur stuff can also knock down biofilms for the bacteria. So uh, it just depends kind of where people are out of the gates. So what I tend to do is add in some gentle um, collagen amino acids or some free form amino acids in a capsule form, maybe some bone broth, you know, as long as there's no histamine issues and really lean on digestive support, I'm going to do that out of the gates. And then maybe when it's time to do gut killing, maybe we'll add in some extra N-acetylcysteine or sulfur amino acids, whether it's just straight NAC, or I have a product called detox aminos that has calcium to glucurate in there, which is great for beta glucuronidase and mold detoxification too. And has a lot of all the other glutathione and NAC and methionine and cysteine and taurine, all those good things. So it just depends out of the gates. Maybe we're just focusing on food, supplemental free form aminos, collagen, and really working on digestion. Yep. And if you've got a kid too, and you're trying to work stuff into their system, it may be a little harder. Epsom salt bass could go a really long way. Yes. And then liposomal glutathione in a liquid form. So there are some really good like syrups and some things that you and I use clinically, which can be helpful. So it's not mandatory that you go to the glutathione level, but that is a really good way to help a lot of different mechanisms because you're going to be mobilizing and pushing toxins out and protecting them too. It's a really powerful antioxidant. So we really like glutathione for kids. And typically we're going to go like a quarter of an adult dose, depending on the weight of the kid. So if it's a young kid we're working with, you know, if a normal dose is a teaspoon, we may come in quarter teaspoon instead, or maybe we go half a teaspoon. And then also you mentioned magnesium. So we could do magnesium oil. You could do magnesium lotion. You could do magnesium drinks. If you could get your kid to drink some magnesium, there's some good options there too. Yeah. Magnesium is very helpful for brain inflammation, right? Russell Blaylock, retired neurosurgeon, talked about the fact that when he would give his patients magnesium post-brain surgery, they healed exponentially faster compared to people, patients he didn't give it to. So we know magnesium is very, very powerful with brain inflammation. Obviously, if you have gut issues, doing Epsom salt baths absorbs it transdermally, right? Flota flotation tanks, same thing, very helpful. And again, if you're a mom or dad and you're listening to this um, and you're just trying to get your kids to eat blueberries away from the crackers, that, do that first, right? Do that first. I mean, you, there's a lot of studies on eating blueberries and some of these low sugar fruits and, and being incredibly anti-inflammatory to the brain. Go there first. If you're having a reaction, then we step it up in the gear. So my son was born, I think oh, was it, it was last year, he was six months old and he was having a lot of eczema issues. And we had to really work on going AIP and low salicylate to get the eczema down. Now, once we worked on gut and digestion and good bacteria balance, we were able to add these foods back in and it wasn't as big of a deal. And when you're younger at that age, there's some uh, immune issues that tend to happen in that first year of life. And so we were able to get through that point and it, his eczema really never came back and unless we eat certain foods that we know are, are not on his plan. But out of the gates, we had to be more restrictive with salicylates and then we were able to, to pull back on that down the road.